Hello everyone! Today I thought I would talk about a lighter and more fun subject compared to the angry atheist and generally raging subjects that I've been talking about before. So today I thought I would talk about the science of sex and attraction. Now this one is what men find attractive in women generally. Now, before I start, let me say that I do know and realize that people find different aspects of the opposite or same sex attractive. And by no means am I about to discuss hard and fast rules about what you must find attractive. These findings that I'm going to talk about have been found to be significant among the general population. And a lot of people can identify with what has been found to be attractive, but obviously it's not the be-all and end-all of what you might find attractive in a female, seeing as though we are doing this one about females in particular. So, let's get started. So, the theory that I'm going to be generally discussing is sometimes referred to as the Barbie doll theory. Basically, that men love the idea of a woman with long blonde hair, blue eyes, big breasts, a nice hourglass figure, small waist, larger hips, and um, generally a younger, more sprightly woman, so that they have more chance of conceiving a child with them and therefore furthering their family and genetics. Okay, the first thing that I'll discuss is the famous waist to hip ratio. Now, um, according to sources, the ideal measurements for a woman is 36, 24 and 36, with the hip to waist ratio of 0.7. Now, this 0.7 ratio has been found to be consistent across most cultures that have been studied and it is also consistent regardless of what actual shape a woman is. If she is stick thin or morbidly obese, but still has that ratio of 0.7 with her hips and her waist, mostly bigger hips and a smaller, more petite waist, it's still considered attractive. So it's the actual proportions that are considered attractive rather than the classic hourglass figure, uh, which is not stick thin but not fat either. Um, this is also proposed uh, as to the reason behind the popularity of corsets. And the reason behind this uh, 0.7 waist to hip ratio and why it is so attractive is because females who have this ratio find it easier to conceive uh, they appear more fertile to the male species and ultimately thousands of years ago that is all one needed to ensure that he could impregnate this woman with a beautiful hip to waist ratio. So another major factor when it comes to what men find attractive in women is youth. Now this is the case for many reasons. The biggest reason mostly is that the younger you are, the more likely you are to conceive a child and to be able to be healthy enough to carry that child. Uh, from about the ages of 15 onwards, when most girls have at least started menstruating, uh, this is an optimum time for cavemen to kind of uh, feast their eyes on potential mates. Now another indicator of youth and a big part of the Barbie doll theory is the long blonde hair. Now, hair shows a woman's health and is also an accurate indicator of age because blonde hair mostly turns to brown as a woman ages. So it is mostly young girls, young teenagers, sometimes women in their early 20s who manage to have naturally blonde hair. But after that, it turns brown. So in order for men thousands of years ago in the caveman era to identify who was a potential mate or suitor or uh, carrier for their child, they would see blonde hair and know that this woman was young enough and healthy enough to carry their young for them. Now, blonde hair is an indicator of youth. 
However, hair length is an indicator of health. Now we all know that you have beautiful hair when you're younger and as you get older it gets ratty and grey and coarse and not very nice. So in order to keep long hair and keep it looking lustrous and attractive, you basically need in the caveman era to be young. I mean, we didn't have mousse or hair gel or hairspray or straighteners or all that kind of stuff that we have nowadays. So in order to determine whether a female was young enough to reproduce with, long hair was an indicator of health. You can actually test this out for yourself, a fun little game. Next time you go out, look at women from behind, only look at their hair, Try and guess how old they are, and when you eventually see their face, you'll be surprised that you are mostly correct in your guesses within a decade or so, because hair is a very good indicator of someone's age. Another factor in the Barbie doll model theory is blue eyes, which obviously I do not have, but they are considered the most attractive eye colour um, seeing as though they go well with blonde hair, you know the old big boobs, blonde hair, blue eyes thing. You know what I'm talking about. So for a long time, psychologists and scientists could not for the life of them figure out why specifically blue eyes were attractive until an undergrad student actually wrote a paper on it in 2002 where she suggested that because blue is the lightest eye colour and a lot of we read from people is through their eyes. When our pupils dilate when we see something we like, with blue eyes it is easier to see and interpret what this person is feeling because it is a lighter colour in the eye and therefore easier for us to see the pupil dilating. Now this is just a hypothesis but uh, from what I've read, it's the only plausible reason as to why we are instinctively attracted to blue eyes. Now, as I mentioned before, everyone has different preferences. Some people like brown eyes, hazel eyes, green eyes, blue eyes. But it is most common and most ingrained in us to find blue eyes attractive. That go with the blonde hair and the idea of youth and all that. So I thought that was a very interesting hypothesis. So I know you might be thinking, well, this is all well and good for cavemen who didn't know any better, but now women can dye their hair, have surgery, and generally alter their entire appearance. Yes, they can, and yes, they do. And guess what? Most guys still fall for it. And this is by no means a reflection on their intelligence. It is a theory called the Savannah Principle, which suggests that our brains cannot comprehend these fake changes in hair colour or body shape because these alterations have only been around for a fraction of the time that our ancient caveman brains have. So cognitively, a man can know that this woman has fake blonde hair, has had plastic surgery, has got blue contacts in, but still the caveman part of his brain still recognises this as a sign of youth and fertility and therefore still finds it attractive. Now, a strongly biological factor of when and what men find attractive in women is the ovulation stage within a woman's menstrual cycle. Roughly two weeks into a woman's menstrual cycle, she begins to ovulate. This is her most fertile stage in which her body is basically telling her to go out, find somebody and have them impregnate you. It is during these four or five days when her lips redden, her skin clears, her breasts swell and she will actually unconsciously wear more revealing clothes to advertise her fertility and to advertise her availableness uh, in order to find a potential mate to breed with basically. 
Uh, quite a famous experiment was done with uh, women's ovulation cycles in which scientists um, went to a strip club and found women differing in their menstrual cycle stages and their ovulating stages and they actually found that women who were ovulating that night received more tips and more money from their customers than those who weren't. So it seems that men and women could subconsciously pick up on these signs that these women are A. available, B. fertile and C. better looking and more confident in themselves because their bodies are programming them to go out and find someone and attract and keep them. Now, of course, all of this needs to be boiled down to tiny, subtle changes in the unconscious. Women, you're not going to turn into a ravenous monster on a mission to become impregnated during your fertile stages. But next time, be aware of when you're ovulating, because it is actually fun to see nature in action. Now, if any of you are interested in more evolutionary psychology and biology, I would highly recommend this brilliant book. It is called Why Beautiful People Have More Daughters. It is by Alan Miller and Satoshi Kanazawa. And it is where I got some of the facts for today's video. And yeah, I would highly recommend it. It's full of uh, really interesting things that you wouldn't think twice about, but can be explained by evolutionary psychology and biology, which I think is a fascinating field because it explains a lot of why we do what we do, which I am ultimately interested in being a psychology student myself. Just as always, I want to hear what you guys think. Um, tell me what you find attractive in women, regardless of whether you're a man or a woman. Are they consistent with what I've just talked about? Or are you on the complete other end of the spectrum and don't agree with anything I said? Um, next one I'll be doing is what women find attractive in men. So watch out, guys. Um, until next time, I'll see you guys later.